Welcome to Very Honored Frater BT's Esoterra Nerd Podcast, Episode 72, the second Esoterra Nerd short episode. I'll leave that in because it kind of had a good timing to it. Um, so basically, someone, I won't say who, but someone said uh, something to the effect of, Hey, brother, I have begun serious work on our temple's vaults. I am down to the walls and was wondering if you had the specs for paint the painting process and the correct method of doing so. So uh, I replied in little 60-second sound bites on Facebook Messenger because it seemed easier than typing. And so here are those responses. So basically, all the Malkuts, from what I understand, remain the same. The four colors and white. And all of the spirit the opposite end remain white they're not tainted by any color so aside from those two the other 38 are the color associated with what it is that's on there so for example for Jupiter it'd be purple king scale uh, for the path of calf for yeah but now on the like, for example, Jupiter of Jupiter would be straight purple. Jupiter on the Luna wall would be a mixture of purple and blue. Oh, hang on. But um, the flashing color of the letter in that case, I'm just giving you this one example just for now. It'll get more complicated, of course. Uh, would be the mixture of the two flashing colors. So in, in the case of purplish blue, or what is called in Golden Dawn Indigo, uh, the opposite would be amber or orangish yellow. Now, it gets more complicated uh, with other colors because there isn't a set rule. Every vault is different. There's just, I mean, there are certain rules. Like, you take the color associated with what you're working with. So in the Sephiroth, it's queen scale, of course. With the paths, it's the king scale. I mean, with the planets, it's the, it's the, it's the color on the rose, in other words, for those 12. Um, i got to do this in one-minute chunks because it'll cut me off after a minute. So this is chunk number two. Okay, chunk number three. Um, so you can either mix it with the color of the wall, and it's tinted with the color of the wall. In other words, the, one of those seven colors of the seven double letters. So, for example, the Venus wall. Every square is going to be tinted either with green or with red, the opposite of green. In cases where, for example, if you have orange and you are looking at like mixing orange with green and you're like uh, why don't I just mix orange with red and the flashing color can be nice and blue green and then that'll be the Venus injected into this that's absolutely acceptable um, so I hope I mean that actually is enough to go on so if you have if you have the question if the question exists which color should be more pronounced, the color of the square or the color of the wall? My understanding is the answer to that question is the color of the square. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind going straight for the middle, just right down the middle. In my astral vault, it's much more down the middle. And my um, preference is to avoid brown. So, like, for example, on the, on the Venus wall, I end up with a lot of different shades of green because rather than having... Um, you know, hoed be orange mixed with green, I'll have it be, you know, green mixed with blue. Now, that might be a little unorthodox to start with the flashing color of the um, thing itself, the square itself. Uh, but I think it's okay. Anyway, I think that more properly on the Venus wall, for example, with the orange, 
it would probably be more proper to make the orange a little bit red and then um, make the uh, the flashing color like a green blue but uh, more toward the blue because you're you know okay so the uh, alchemical symbols from what I understand blue is for salt and red is for sulfur and yellow is for mercury so for example on the sun wall that would be yellow for mercury mixed with a little bit of orange and so the flashing color would be bluish purple um, <clears throat> The four carobs are probably just the straight colors, uh, red, um, blue, yellow, and, well, you don't really... I, I, I'm, I'm leaning toward thinking that the carobs up at the top, because there's like the four carobs, right, up at the top. Um, and as separate from the fixed signs, which are lower down. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but, yeah, that's, those are the basic rules. Uh, so, like, for example, for the fixed, let me just pick a wall. Let's say um, Mars wall. Uh, so for the fixed um, signs, which are lower down by Typhirid, if I'm not mistaken, um, you have Leo, which is yellow, on the Mars wall, that yellow turns to orange, so the flashing color would be blue. The, uh, the, the one next to it would be Scorpio, and that is teal, or bluish green, normally. So on the Mars wall, you might make it more green, closer to the green, almost entirely green, but not quite. Um, so in other words, you're doing that rather than making it brown by um, mixing red straight with the teal. If you mix red with greenish blue, you get a shade of brown. Now, you can do the shade of brown. It's more earthy to do that. And it's a bit more ethereal and astral to go for uh, the, the color that's more pure. So maybe on a case-by-case, case you could make that decision. But really, I mean, it's a lot up to the artist. And if there isn't someone looking over your shoulder, you know, then it's up to you. And then when someone asks you what, what that color means, just make sure you can explain it. So if you have any other specific questions, um, let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye. And that's our show. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too obscure. We were talking about the Rosicrucian Vault of the Adepti. The real Rosicrucian. Be sure to tune in next week. Next Friday, Joe Shantz and I will be interviewing Matt Mortar. Or more like he'll be interviewing us. He is uh, beginning upon the path and has a lot of questions. And so he is going to be asking Joe and I those questions. Special thanks to Susumu Ueda, who composed the music you're hearing right now. His father is one of the monks that are chanting uh, in the background. <clears throat> Susumu composed the music or arranged the music and everything. He uh, makes music for anime, so check him out. Susumu, exactly how it sounds, Ueda, that's U-E-D-A, and uh, you can see some of his music. It's very, very beautiful music. It's interesting to think that his dad's a monk in Jofuku Inn on Mount Koyasan. And he's down on the uh, surface, down not at the top of Mount Koyasan, uh, making music for anime. Generations. Anyhow, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, do check out the To Be a Yogi podcast. We've had several good guests lately. And if I can draw your attention to edward Reeb, and that's R-E-I-B dot com, that's my mundane name, forward slash V-H frater B-T. Uh, that's V-H-F-R-A-T-E-R-B-T. Um, you will note that if you haven't been there in a while, it looks a lot nicer than it used to. It's a lot friendlier on a mobile phone. And if you scroll all the way down, 
If you'd like to help us out, there's the Patreon account. Uh, you can donate a dollar a month. Another way you can help out the podcast without money is if you scroll up and click on the iTunes link and go ahead and log into iTunes and give us a good five five star rating and leave a comment about what you love about the Esoteric Nerd podcast. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll be back next week. Good night. To the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, to the spirits of light among us and to the spirits below, we send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. May all beings be in peace.